Pervez Musharraf was living in exile for years, fighting to clear his name. The former Pakistani president was charged in connection with the 2007 assassination of former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto. He was also sentenced to death after being found guilty of treason before a court in Pakistan overturned it in 2020. The head of the military had seized power in a bloodless coup in 1999 and served as president from 2001 until 2008. After the 9-11 attacks, Musharraf aligned himself with the so-called war on terror. General Musharraf is under American pressure. He is, this is not a war against terrorism. This is a war against Islam. He also supported the war in Afghanistan. He tried to balance relations with the U.S. and tribal leaders. Musharraf later said the United States threatened to bomb Pakistan if he didn't commit to fighting al-Qaeda. Musharraf was criticised for failing to improve the economy at home and mend ties with India. That's despite a high-profile visit to Agra, where many had hoped it would lead to better relations. Firing Pakistan's chief justice in 2007 proved to be his fatal political move. It led to street protests. I rest my future in the hands of the nation and the people. Let them be the judges. And ultimately, the man who survived multiple assassination attempts was forced to resign a year later. He lived in exile for a while, but the lure of power was too attractive. He tried to stage a political comeback in 2013. I was thinking the government would call me back and would say, save Pakistan, but that did not happen. Today, my nation ordered me to come back. I came back, putting my life in danger to save Pakistan. Instead, he was arrested and charged with murdering Benazir Bhutto, the first woman democratically elected in a Muslim-majority country. The government allowed Musharraf to leave in 2016 to seek medical treatment for a serious illness. General Musharraf, though, had always denied wrongdoing and maintained the case against him was politically motivated. Let's bring in now Al Jazeera's Kamal Haider in Islamabad for us. So, Kamal, uh, Musharraf uh, had been living in Dubai since 2016. What are the initial reactions first in Pakistan to news of his death? Well, most of Pakistan was marking Kashmir Day today. So the news, of course, coming on Kashmir Day, there is a somber mood. Obviously, this is... Uh, a man with a mixed legacy. There are supporters who will tell you that he did great services for this country. However, uh, since going into a self-imposed exile after he was sentenced for treason, he was suffering from a rare disease, and that, of course, was the cause of his death also. Now, we are told that his family members are meeting to discuss whether the body will be brought back to Pakistan. There's been message, uh, uh, messages of condolences uh, from the joint chiefs of the military, that's the Air Force, the Navy, the Army. Uh, Musharraf, of course, has done a lot for the military forces when he was in power. So uh, the news, of course, coming uh, again as uh, sad news for a country that is struggling under an economic crisis and mm. also hit by a wave of uh, terror attacks. Kamal, you talked about his, his mixed legacy. What will Pakistanis re remember him most for? Well, one thing uh, that he was the man who ushered a revolution in the Pakistani electronic media by privatizing, by allowing several channels to come on air and to be able to uh, have critical debates. So, that, of course, also proved to be his downfall. It was the genie he let out of the bottle but could not put back. Also, the fact that he uh, did a lot for not just the military but also to help improve Pakistan's image overseas, to build uh, Im important infrastructure. His economic contributions relatively, when you compare with other leaders, was relatively better and also because of the fact the United States wanted Pakistan to be a key launching pad uh, for its operations in Afghanistan after the September 11th attacks. That was an unpopular, difficult decision for General Musharraf to make, 
because the people of Pakistan did not want to get involved in that war. So, indeed, there will be critics who will criticize him. And, of course, he had his own supporters. But although he tried to make a political comeback by launching his own party, uh, the health condition that he was in was something that he could not continue. And, of course, today, Pakistan is receiving yet another sad news that one of their former leaders, a controversial one, no doubt, is no more. Thank you for that, Kamal Haider, live in Islamabad.